Have you ever wondered how far the stars are from the Earth? Or how far the Sun is from the Earth? Have you ever considered how the early navigators planned their routes? How did they know how far they needed to travel until they reached dry land? We have come to take our roads for granted. Have you thought about who designed them and how they did this? How did they work out the angles of slopes for the roads and railway lines? How do bridges stand up and not topple over? How does one build a structure like a bridge? Do you know what trigonometry is? What the history of trigonometry is? And also, what are the uses of trigonometry? In this lesson, I will take you on a journey where we will explore the fascinating world of trigonometry. Join me as we make some discoveries. By the end of this lesson, you should know about the history and origins of trigonometry, the practical uses of trigonometry in our world. If you look up the word trigonometry in a dictionary, you will see it comes from two Greek words, trigonon meaning triangle and metron meaning measuring. Trigonometry is based on the study of right angled triangles, that is triangles that include an angle of 90 degrees. In trigonometry we study the ratios of the sides of triangles. Trigonometry also deals with the ways in which the sides and angles of triangles are related to each other. This form of mathematics has been around since 150 BC, which means before the birth of Christ. Look at this picture of Hipparchus of Nicaea. He lived from 170 to 125 BC. He was fascinated by astronomy. He studied the stars and wanted to find out as much as he could about the Earth. He was the first known person to discover formulae for trigonometry. Can you believe that people were doing such advanced maths so many years ago? Yet we still use this system today. Do you know anything about the uses of trigonometry? It was used to solve problems about the positions and movements of the planets and stars. Listen to this. In this book, it says that Muslims use trigonometry to navigate across the desert to Mecca. Mecca, found in western Saudi Arabia, was the birthplace of the Prophet Muhammad. Every year, millions of Muslims make a pilgrimage to the city. In this book, I also read that trigonometry has many practical uses in civil engineering, architecture and navigation. Engineers and surveyors actually use trigonometry when they work. Surveyors can measure the heights of mountains without actually having to climb these mountains. Do you know what a surveyor does? Let's hear what a surveyor had to say. I'm a professional land surveyor. Um, to be a land surveyor one needs a degree, four-year degree at university. In, in that degree you do three years of maths. Um, most of my work is involved in measurement and production of plans whether they're topographical plans, uh, subdivisions of properties, uh, calculation of areas and volumes. Living in the city, most of my work is involved in um, development of properties, so that would be cluster developments, 
um, preparation of contour plans for engineers to do their planning with. Uh, architects would need our plans. Uh, town planners, all sorts of professionals involved in property use the plans that we produce. And what does an architect do? Let's hear what an architect had to say. We did uh, courses in maths, applied maths and physics, probably purely because architecture is a mix of art and science, amongst other things. The component of art and science is, is, is a critical mix that needs to be developed and understood within the profession. Um, in so far as the involvement of maths in that, um, maths is, a, is, is obviously in terms of building, in terms of construction, is an obvious uh, component of the profession. It's an obvious component of design and it's absolutely necessary, especially with regard to issues such as trigonometry, angles, uh, those aspects of mathematics, um, that the design of buildings incorporates, obviously, angles, incorporates uh, mathematics. And, and as such, it's a, a, an important aspect of, of the training and it's an important aspect of the execution of the profession. From architectural points of view, I think mathematics comes into its own, certainly in terms of things like a basic, let's call it a calculation of sun angles. Um, where you may want to determine a particular amount of sun in a building or a shadow that it casts, a courtyard you may be designing at a particular point of the year and you say well in midwinter when the sun is sitting at a maximum height at 12 noon at 45 degrees in Johannesburg um, you need to know if you're creating a courtyard what that's going to do in terms of giving the inhabitants of the building sunshine, giving it light, giving it warmth Modern mathematicians use the discoveries made by mathematicians of very long ago. But they find ways to make the theories more understandable and quicker to use. A surveyor uses a theodolite. Listen to what the surveyor said about using a theodolite. We're going to measure from a known point to an unknown point. This is an electronic theodolite and this will measure the, the distance, the vertical angle, and the height. Um, so I'll aim onto the reflector that he's holding on that side there. And measure. And there you have the distance and direction from which we can calculate his position and height. Now. Do you know how one can use this theodolite to find the height of a mountain? Well, the surveyor stands at a point quite far from the mountain where he can see the whole mountain. He then draws a picture to capture what he sees. The picture is in the same ratio as the real mountain. What this means is that the smaller picture of the mountain that he has drawn is the same shape as the real mountain. The smaller version and the real version are like similar triangles. Can you recall anything about similar triangles? In similar triangles, the angles in one triangle are all the same sizes as the corresponding angles in the other triangle. But these triangles are not the same size. Let's take a look at two triangles. In triangle ABC, angle B is equal to 90 degrees, angle C is equal to 30 degrees, therefore angle A is equal to 60 degrees. Let's go and fill this in on our diagram. Angle A, 60 degrees. Now let us take a look at triangle D, E, F. Angle E is 90 degrees, angle F is 30 degrees, therefore angle D is 60 degrees. These triangles are called similar because the corresponding angles are the same size. 
Also, the sides of these triangles are in proportion and this information is particularly important for our surveyor. Let's take a look. This is what he does. He fills into his diagram where he sees the top of the mountain. Let's call it C. He then chooses two points, A and B. On the ground to represent the width of the mountain. Then he fills in what he sees as the bottom of the mountain. I would say that it would be at about here at D for this example. D is directly below C, the top of the mountain. CD is then the height of the triangle. Next he draws in triangle A D B. Triangle A D B is flat. Points A, B and D are all on the ground. He joins CA and CB. He then physically measures this length of the baseline AB and then finds the sizes of the angles CAB, CBA, CAD and CBD using the theodolite. Using trigonometry, he is able to work out the height of the mountain. Because the triangle that he drew in his mini picture is proportionate to the real mountain, the angles of the triangle are equal to the angles of the real mountain. And because he actually measured the size of the baseline AB, the answer he will get will be true for the real mountain. <laughs> Isn't that really amazing? Did you guess that trigonometry would be so interesting and relevant? In this task, I would like you to find out as much as you can about the history of trigonometry and more uses of trigonometry in modern day life. In the next lesson, we are going to make an instrument called an astrolabe. Now, what will you need? A sheet of cardboard, some paper clips, a straw, a protractor, some sticky tape, a ball of adhesive, flexible adhesive or plasticine, a pencil and a pair of compasses, a ruler, a pair of scissors and most importantly a piece of string. Exciting stuff! Till next time, bye bye!